Hi there, this is True News, where we bring to you the news behind the news. Now, the former National Chairman of the All Progressive Congress, Adams Oshomolo, on Wednesday night said life was not all about winning. The former leader, who spoke for the first time on the outcome of Saturday's governorship election in a do state which his party lost to the People's Democratic Party, said losing was also part of life. The quote reads, in life, you work hard and leave God for the outcome. You do your best, trust God to bless your efforts. I feel good, I feel strong, thank God. In life, you win some and you lose some, but life goes on, he said. You see, this is a total 360 ton from the dictatorial and braggadocious former APC national chairman we all knew. He seems to have had a Damascus experience and now sees life differently when he doesn't have the federal mind behind him. Do you remember when he said he would crush the opposition and chase them out of Nigeria? Do you remember how he single-handedly destroyed APC with his dictatorial tendencies? He brooked no opposition and believed that might was always right. Now he's supposedly repentant and reformed, preaching a new gospel after suffering defeat at the hands of his former political bureau. But we all learn from his mistakes. Now, moving forward, Boko Haram yesterday ambushed an advanced team of the Burma State Governor Baba Ganazolum between Monguno and Baga, killing eight policemen, three soldiers and four members of civilian JTF. Sources said the governor who was in Baga in preparation for the return of thousands of residents displaced by terrorists in 2014 arrived town by helicopter, only to learn of the attack on the rest of his team who travelled by road. You will recall that this is the same Boko Haram that the chief of army said stood Nigerian several times that they have defeated and have no base in Nigeria anymore. Now, thousands of people have been killed by Boko Haram this year and missed several deniers by the army of their capabilities. There has been calls for the sack of service chief of which the president has ignored. It is now unclear what has to happen in Nigeria before the president takes a decisive action on security measures other than the usual promise about reviewing security architecture. Now, the United Kingdom has responded to the Nigerian government's condemnation of its threats to impose a visa ban on perpetrators of electoral violence in the country, saying it respects the sovereignty of Nigeria, but it reserves the right to determine who gets British assets. It seems the threat of visa ban on government officials and politicians is actually working. I mean, most Nigerians believe that this set of people destroy and loot the country's bling while they stash their stolen loot overseas. It is common knowledge that the families of most government officials and politicians live overseas. So it is in my expectation that the United Kingdom, the United States and other well-meaning countries should, in addition to the visa ban, deport the families of these people back to Nigeria so they can enjoy the Nigeria that their parents have created. So I go with the hashtag deport them now. Now in defiance to all entries and subtle threats from the federal government, the Nigerian Labour Congress, the Trade Union Congress is set to commence their planned strike on Monday as they have frantically continued with the mobilization of their members across the country yesterday. The federal government in response to the threats is busy procuring court orders in which the union are set to disobey. Now, Nigerians are still in shock as to the callousness of the government in increasing the price of electricity and petroleum products at the time majority of Nigerians live in abject poverty. You see, the Buhari administration seems to have completely lost the plot and now appears that they are on a mission to impoverish the Nigerian populace. So the big question is, who will save us? And finally, on true news, the Southern and Middle Belt Leaders Forum has played the plan by the federal government to build a $1.9 billion rail line from Kano to Niger Republic. The leaders in a statement entitled Kano Niger Rail, Buhari Commitment to Nigeria Doubt, were jointly signed by Chief God Edwin Clark, Chief Ayo Adebanjo, Chief John Wudu, and Dr. Pugu Britus described the project as share waste of the nation's scarce resources and asked Nigerians to reject the insensitive project. This is the same government that just increased VAX, electricity tariffs, petroleum product prices, and now they use the nation's money to build railway lines in Niger. So I'm wondering, how many Nigerians would this rail line serve? This has to be one of the most nonsensical projects I've heard in my not too long life. But then, who's advising the government anyways? That's all for today. Please drop a comment in the comment section below and follow us on all our social media platforms at Rich TV Nigeria.